Hey everyone, it's Steve. Welcome back to my channel. Hey, in today's video, I'm going to take and terminate a Cat 6A onto a Cat 6A jack. Now, just to be clear, 6A is quite a bit different than 6 or 5E. So just as a point of comparison, here's a 5E. All right, see the difference in size? This is about as thick as like a cable, uh, like cable TV cable, like RG6. And then just here's like a Cat 6, like plain old Cat 6. Again, still quite a bit bigger. So Cat 6A. So the reason I mention that is it's a little bit harder to work with. I'm still kind of getting used to it myself. And also the the jack, the Keystone jack you want to get, make sure that's a Cat 6A cable because it means that it'll be ready to accommodate the thickness and the uh, the gauge of the, of the copper wires inside. All right, I want to start by uh, cutting off some of the insulation. Uh, I have found my strippers don't work so well on this, so I've just resorted to just using my snips as such. So I just take my, si my snips and score the cable a little bit here, break it open, pull off the jacket. All right, there's my there's my conductors inside these little wires. All right, now uh, unlike six, which has that little four-way spline. At least maybe that's just the way Comscope does it. This is a Comscope cable. Is it just has like this little flat spline in there. So I'm just gonna cut that out of there, being careful not to nick the uh, the uh, individual uh, conductors inside. And also, in case you're wondering, these are what's known as snips. They're electrician scissors. So they're not the same as household scissors. You probably could get away if you don't do this very often with just using some kind of industrial scissors or maybe even a knife. But the key is, is that when you take that jacket, this white part off, you don't want to nick any of these individual wires inside. All right, now what you will notice is that these wires are multicolored. There's like a blue, a green, orange, and a brown. And each one of them is a set of two wires. They're mixed together. They're white, brown, white, blue, white, green, white, orange. And these are what are known as pairs. Now the pairs have to get mapped onto the keystone jack where the colors match. So do you see how like on the inside of that jack there's like a like a solid orange and then like a like an orange slash white and there's like a, a solid blue and a blue slash white? Well those correspond to these colors too. So I'll put the solid blue wire onto the solid blue square and then I'll put the white wire that's that's wrapped with the blue, I'll put that on the white slash blue spot. Now these little things right here, these are individual little grooves. And inside those grooves, deep down inside those grooves, are like little metal teeth. They're almost think of as like, like scissor teeth. And so what happens is, is when the wire is pushed down to the grooves, if you want to pretend this 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 whole entire cable is like one of the little in individual conductors, it's kind of like they sink down into the teeth. And as they do, as they sink down, the metal cuts into the wire, or I mean cuts into the insulation and then reaches the, the copper inside. Now the reason I mentioned this this is because this is key because if you don't make those connections, even though it might look physically like I've got the wires where you want them, if they're not touching, if they're not sealed inside those 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 little metal teeth in there, then it's it's not going to be a good connection or it's it's not going to be a connection at all. All right, now you notice how these wires are all twisted? We want to keep the twist as much as possible. Now normally working with Cat 6 and Cat 5, it's fairly easy to just take the cable and just kind of bend it over the slots and just kind of push on it. I've noticed with 6A it's a little bit trickier, partly because these winds are so much tighter than they are in 5E or, or 6. So what I'm going to do is without having too much distance between the end of the jacket and where the actual plastic of the, of the jack uh, structure is, I want to take and map these colors out into the slots. So like right here I've got a, I've got a uh, white orange and an orange. So I'm going to take this white orange pair and I want to try to get it so that the wires fall down right where I want them to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to untwist but only as much as is needed. All right, I don't want a lot of untwisting going on because the twisting action of the wires is what actually creates the noise suppression and the speed capability of the uh, of the network cable. And then I'm going to do the green over here on this side. All right, I'm sorry, my hands are in the way. It's 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 almost inevitable. It's really tough to make these videos and not have periods where, unfortunately, my hand is blocking the view. I'll try to keep you know re re-emphasizing or you know re-showing you what I'm doing so you can keep track. So, all right, and get this orange. So I'm going to finish these out. 
And then what we're going to do is we're going to do what's known as terminating, which is using uh, a special tool to push these down into the, the slots the way they go. All right, so now you see how I've got the individual wires pushed down into the appropriate slots where they match the colors. And I've left as much of the twist on the back end as I can. The twist out here doesn't really matter. That's all going to get cut off in a minute. But, but the twisting action that's going back to the jacket, that's what we don't want. The other thing we don't want is we don't want a lot of space between where the jacket ends and the physical structure of the jack starts. All right, we want to keep that to a minimum, just a few centimeters, I mean, I'm sorry, a few millimeters at best. All right, now I'm going to use what's known as a 110 punch down tool. All right, if you don't have this, you can use something else, preferably something kind of stiff and plastic that will push those into the grooves. Um, but this tool is specifically made just for that. And it's, it makes kind of a loud noise, so I'm going to do this right now. It's, it's actually called, a, sometimes referred to as an impact tool. And I'm going to take and cut these wires. And if you're lucky, sometimes when you when you do this, the the wire the rest of the wire actually breaks off on the end. Um, that's because the 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 tool itself has like this little little bitty blade right there on the cut side. Um, but I have found oh, that happens about 50% of the time for me. I usually end up having to just go back. It makes a perforation, and then I just kind of wiggle the wires, and they kind of fall off after that. Now, if you don't have the impact tool and you're just using some kind of a plastic thing to push those in, then what you'll need to do is once you've got them secured as you come back with, with whatever kind of cutting tool or whatever, and you're going to want to cut their slack off as close to the to the structure of the jack as you can. All right. Now, let me get this hopefully where you can see it. I, and again, I apologize. I know a lot of times my hand ends up in the way of the camera, but I'm going to try to do this in such a way that you can see the actual action of what I'm doing here. Well, that one came off pretty good. So, like I said, if you, perfect world. If you do it right, they should just the slack should just fall off there after you do the do the cut. All right, now almost all jacks come with a, what's known as a dust jacket. On the 6A, it's a little bit different. It's well, at least for this one, this is a Leviton uh, Cat 6A jack, and this thing they call the cone of silence, and it fits over the top like that. And then what you do is you take the rest of the cable and just kind of bend it up like this, and then that's what it should look like when it's done, right there. Now, of course, you always want to test your cable with some kind of a tester once you've got both ends done to validate that uh, all the conductors are seated properly. All right, well, hope that helps you out. Thanks for watching.